Good day. We are now in lesson 14. Why was Rizal hero a Creole? Kumet Smart is okay. May 4, 1917. April 29, 2004. He was a Filipino writer and journalist, best known for his short stories and novels in the English language. He also wrote using the pen name Kehano de Manila. Or, and Joaquin was conferred the rank of the title of the National Artist of the Philippines for Literature. He has been considered one of the most important Filipino writers along with Jose Rizal and Claro M. Recto. Unlike Rizal and Recto, whose works were written in Spanish, Joaquin's major works were written in English despite being a native Spanish speaker. Contribution of Nick Joaquin in the Literature before 1521, we could have been anything and everything not Filipino. After 1565, we can be nothing but Filipino. Culture and History, 1988 Nick Joaquin is regarded by many as the most distinguished Filipino writer in English writing, so varietly and so well about so many aspects of the Filipino. Nick Joaquin has also enriched the Filipino language with critics coining Joaquinness. To describe his Baroque Spanish playboard, English or his adventures of English based of Filipinism. Aside from his handling of language, Benvenido Lumbrera writes that Nick Joaquin's significance in the Philippine literature involves the exploration of the Philippine colonial past under Spain and his probing into the psychology of social changes as is seen by Young as exemplified in a story such as Doña Jeronima. Candidus Apocalypse and the Order of Melchizedek. Deck. Nick Joaquin was has written plays, novels, poems, short stories, and essays, including reportage and journalism. As a journalist, Nick Joaquin uses the nom de plume Quijano de Manila, but whether he is writing literature or journalism, fellow national artist Francisco Arsenia opines that it is always of the highest skill and quality. Among his Bolognese works are The Woman Who Had Two Novels, Two Navels, A Portrait of Artists as the Filipino, Manila, My Manila, A History for the Young, The Ballad of Five Battles, Rizal in Saga, Almanya for Manil Manilenos, Cave in Shadows. But sadly, Nick died on April 29, 2004. Some of the works of Nick Wakri was the, Do the Doveglion and other cameras, Joseph Strada and other sketches, Ang Kompletong Tula at Dulaan ni Jose Rizal na isinali ni Nick Joaquin, Mr. F.E.U. Ang Bayaning Kultura na sinika Nor Reyes, and Nick Joaquin's Culture and History. He also have his books, namely Prose and Poems, Mga tulo tula Tulayan at Patula, 1952, The Woman Who Had Two Neighbors, Ang Babae Na May Dalawang Pusod, from 1961, Lana, Lanabal de Manila and Other Essays, Lanabal de Manila at Iba Pang Sanaysay, from 1964, A Portrait of the Artist as Filipino, Ang Larawan ng Makabata Bilang Filipino, from 1966, Tropical Gothic, Gothic on Tropical, from 1972, the complete poems and plays of Jose Rizal Ang mga kompletong tula at dulaan ni Jose Rizal 1976 A Question of Heroes Isang question sa mga bayani From 1977 Nora Honor and Other Profiles Si Nora Honor at iba pang katangian 1977 Ronnie Poe and Other Silhouettes Ronnie Poe at ang iba pang aninag ng bagay 1977 Reportage on Lovers Pagbabalita sa Pag-ibig From 1977 Reportage on Crime, Pagbabalita sa Carmen, from 1977. Amalia Fuentes and Other Etchings. Si Amalia Fuentes, di ba pang pag-uukit sa bakal? From 2012, Gloria Diaz and Other Delenation. Si Gloria Diaz, di ba pang Delenation, from 1977. Duvig Leon and Other Cameos. Si Duvig Leon at iba pang Cameo, from 1977. Manila, Sin City and Other Chronicles Manila, Makasalanang Lusod at Iba Pang Chronica from 1977 Tropical Borough, Tropical na Baro, 1979 Stories for Groovy Kids, Mga Kwento Para Sa Mga Batang Kasiya-Siya from 1979 
language of the street, and other essays. Ang wika ng mga kasada at iba pang mga sanaysay from 1980, The Ballad of Five Battles, ang kurido ng mga limang labanan from 1981, The Aquinos of Tarlac, an essay on history as a three generations, ang mga Aquinos sa Tarlac, isang sanaysay sa kasaysayan bilang tatlong salin lahi from 1983, Almanac for Manilenos, Almanac para sa mga taga Maynila. Cave in Shadows, Ang Yonge at Ang Mga Anino from 1983. The Quartet of the Tiger Moon, Scenes from the People, Power Apocalypse. Ang apatang pangkat ng Tigring Buwan, Mga Tagpo ng Mga Apocalypsis na Mga Lakas ng Sambayanan from 1986. Collected Verse, Nililikom na Panulaan from 1987. Culture and History, Occasional Notes on the Process of Philippine Becoming Kultura at kasaysayan, ang, mga magdala, ang madalang matala sa proseso ng pagiging Pilipinas from 1988. Manila, may Manila, a history for the young. Manila, aking Manila, isang kasaysayan ukol sa mga bata. From 1990, the DM Gibara story, ang kwento ni DM Gibara from 1993. Mr. FEU, the culture hero that was Nicanor Reyes. Or GFEU, mga bayan ng kultura ng si Nicanor Reyes from 1995. And last but not the least is the Rizal Saga. Rizal sa maalamat ng tuluyan from 1996. Um, Nick Joaquin Awards. Tala ng karangalan ni Jose Garcia Villa, 1940. Paligsa ng maikling kwento ng Philippines Free Press, 1949. Mga sampung namumukuntang yung batang ginoo ng Pilipinas, or, or TOYM. Ginawaran para sa panitikang 1955. Gawad pang Alaala kay Don Carlos Palangka para sa panitikan 1957 to 1958, 1965, 1967, 1976. Kapatiran sa pagsusulat ng Harper Publishing Company, Bagong York, mga nagkakaisang estado. Gawad Stonehill para sa nobela, 1960. Gawad pamanang pangkultura ng Republika, 1961. Gawad patnobe at singin kalin, kalin, kalinangan mula sa lungsod ng Manila, 1964. Pambansang alagad ng sining para sa panitika, 1976. Gawad sulat ng C, 1980. Gawad ramon magsaysay para sa panitika, 1996. Gawad tanglaw ng lahi mula sa pamantasang Ateneo de Manila, 1997. Mga ba't ibang gawad eso sa pamamahayag kabilang matataas na kinaasang gawad mamamahayag ng taon. Mga pambansang gawad para sa aklat mula sa pangkat ng mga tag- tagupuna ng Maynila. Para sa The Aquinas of Tarla, an essay in history as. And by the way, Nicomedes Marcus Joaquin was the author of Why Was the Rizal Hero a Creole? Rizal Hero a Creole. Why Was the Rizal Hero a Creole explain news the character Juan Crisostomo Ibarra, a.k.a. Simeon. A Creole as his hero in his novels, no limitang hiri and el plebusterismo. Rizal himself was also a Creole of Spanish native in his Chinese descent. <laughs> What is the meaning of Creole? A Creole language or simply a Creole is a stable natural language that has the developed from. The word pidgin refers to a language used as a means of communication between people who do not share a common language. The word pidgin derives from the mispronunciation of the English word business. The term pidgin English was first applied to the commercial lingua franca used in southern China and Melanesia. But now, pidgin is a generic term that refers to any simplified language and has derived from two or more parent language. When a pidgin develops into a more complex language, complex language the, and becomes the first language of the community, it is called a creole. Kung baga, um, pidgins and creoles are new language um, that develop into language. Contact situ- situation because of a need, need for communication among the people who do not share a common um, language. Yung parang magkaiba, magkaiba kayo ng um, language. So, yun yung gina- ginagamit nyo para magkaintindihan. A pidgin continues to be used primary as a second language for intergroup communication. Where, whereas, a creole has become the mother tongue of a particular group of speakers. The lexicon of Pidgin or Creole is derived from the various languages originally in contact with the majority usually coming from one particular language called the lexifier. 
However, the grammar of the pidgin or creole is different from from the of the lexifier or any other contributing languages. Criollos and Peninsulares. Peninsulares are Spanish born Spaniards or mainland Spanish that resides on East Indies as opposed to a person of full Spanish descent born in America or Philippines, also known as Criollos. Peninsulares are Spaniard born on Spain or in their peninsula. Kumpaga, yung Spaniard na yun, dun mismo pinanganak sa kanilang bansa or sa kanilang mainland. While the Creolos naman, is, o ano sila, um, originally is Spaniard, pero hindi sila um, pinanganak doon sa kanilang mainland. Like, kunyari ako, Spaniard ako, pero pinanganak ako hindi sa Spain, kundi sa ibang lugar, kunyari sa Pilipinas or sa Amerika. Two terms were used to differentiate the origin of the Spaniard residing in 19th century colonial Philippines. A Spaniard born in Spain was referred as a peninsular, meaning born in Spanish peninsula. While Criollo, or also known born abroad. In Spanish colonial times, Criollo referred to a full-blooded Spaniard born in Spanish colonies in Asia and Americas. It was termosly used to differentiate from peninsulares or full-blooded Spaniards born originally in Spain or their mainland. And mestizos, person of both Spanish and Native American or Asian ancestry. Criollos were the second highest rank group in the Spanish racial hierarchy. The Spanish government distinguished Criollos from four other common racial groups in Marianas during Spanish colonial rule that span the 17th to 19th centuries. High-ranking government positions in colonies were given to Criollos as there were almost no peninsulares in the Marianas. For administrative purposes, the groups were defined from highest to lowest rank as follows. The first one was the highest ranking was the peninsulares. Second one is Criollos. Third one is Mestizos, fourth one is Filipinos, person native to the Philippine Island, and the last one was Indios, persons native to the Mariana Islands. Yan, peninsulares are Spanish born Spaniards or mainland Spaniards that reside on East Indies as opposed to persons of full Spanish descent born in America or Philippines, also known as Filipinos. Yun nga, sinabi ko kanina. Peninsulares is a, uh, yung Spaniard na yun, pinanganak talaga sa kanilang mainland or in this is Spain talaga. According to Joaquin, the clash between the Criollos and Peninsular was a repeated theme in the novels of Jose Rizal. Peninsulas, they are the highest class in the Philippine entrusted with the offices of high rank. Peninsulas are pure-blooded Spaniards both born from Spain and sent to Spanish colonies to govern. Often times they are awarded with great favors and large quantities of quantities of land. During the Spanish time, the Governor General of the Philippines as well as the other powerful offices are held by peninsulares. The most well known to us most probably is Miguel Lopez de Legazpi, who colonized a huge part of the Philippines. Another quite prominent figure in Ram is Ramon Blanco y Arenas, or the Governor General during the time of Rizal and the Adipunan. He was too nice to Filipinos and he was accused of the being too consecutory which led, led to his removal from power. O, alam naman natin, di ba, nung um, panahon ng pananakop ng mga Kastila, um, yung mga peninsulares or native talaga na Spaniards are, yun nga, sinakop tayo, inabuso, madaming napatay ng mga Pilipino. Kasi ginamit nila yung power kasi sila yung nasa taas. Alam nila na pag hindi sila sinunod, pwede nilang patayin or pahirapan. Kasi nga um, sila yung sila yung nasa pinakataas, sila dapat sundin. Dapat kahit anong utos nila dapat susundin. And hindi hindi sila dapat um balikta rin or kumpaka try do rin sila. Kasi may sinabi sila or inutos, hindi mo gagawin hindi maaari yun that time kasi kamatayin talaga yung palit. And 
map um, lahat ng yan lahat ng um, masamang ginawa ng mga Spaniards during that time is nakasulat sa um, No Limit Tangere in El Pelibusturismo na nobela ni Dr. Jose Rizal doon pinapakita ni Dr. Rizal kung gaano um, kung gaano kasakim kung, kung gaano kalupit ang mga Espanyol lalo na yung mga um, mga pare na parang sila yung nagsusol-sol sila yung isa, isa pa sila sa pinakamataas sa panahon na yun like pag sinabi ng pare na gusto ko yan, gusto ko to dapat makuha nila eh, hindi, mo, hindi mo sila pwedeng hindi sun, um, sundin pero may mga mangilan nila naman na ano mangilan nila naman ng mga Spaniards na um, hindi masyado gaano kalupit sa mga Pilipino like para sa ni ano, um, Ramon Blanco i Pilipinas na yun nga na akala siguro ng um, ibang Spaniards na nagiging masyadong mabay siya sa mga Pilipino ayun inakusahan siya na masyadong um, mabait hindi gaano stricto kaya tinanggal siya sa kanyang pwesto or tinanggal siya na kapangyarihan para mamuno after Rizal's death which he objected to he presented his ceremonial sword and such of, of office to the hero's family whether it be apology or paying tribute to Rizal it is uncommon for a pensionarist to do such yun niya sabi after ng pagkamatay ni Dr. Rizal He presented this ceremonial sword and such of office to the hero's family, whether it be apology or paying tribute to Sir Rizal. Yun yung sabi, sabi, sabi dito. Parang sobrang uncommon yun sa mga peninsulares kasi iniisip nila, ba't sila magaganang, ba't silang mag-pay tribute or mag-apology dun sa namatay? Eh, yun nga sa novels niya, is sila yung tinitira. Like, sinasabi ni Dr. Sir Rizal, para sa kanila, sinisiraan sila na... Yun nga, kung ano-ano sinasabi doon ni Dr. Rizal Sal sa kanila sa nobela niya na mga malulupit, walang awa, mamamatay tao, and um, abuso sa kapangyarihan. Kaya sobrang ang common doon sa kanila na bakit ang bakit ang kaparehas naming lahi isa din Spaniards magpipay tribute or apology doon. So, di ba sobrang ang common? Siyempre, isipin nila Um, parang ma, parang mapagkumbaba pag-iisipin nila mapagkumbaba ba kami parang ganun ba kami ganun ba kami um, ganun ba kami touring ng mga Pilipino like mawawalan sila na ano parang mag-worry sila na baka sabihin ng mga Pilipino na hindi na kami natatakot sa inyo kasi ganun nga nag-apology or nag-pray tribute tri- yung isang um Spaniards nung pagkamatay ni Dr. Rose. Parang iniisip nila na ano, mas bababa yung tingin ng mga Pilipino sa kanya na kasi nga nag ano sila ng apology. Insulares, they are the rank below the Peninsulares. The Insulares are also known Criolos. Criolos are of the European descent but born in the colonies of Spain. A son or daughter of a Spanish couple is an Insulare. Eventually, they may have been intermarrying with Filipinos or other races here in the country, thus producing the mestizo. Yon, alam naman tayo ano mga mestizo, yung mga mukopote. Um, so madaling salita na lang ano, maganda at guapito. Tapos mapote yung ano, iskinin. Hindi kagaya ng mga normal na Pilipino dati na um, kayo manggi, may mga maitim, or dark color skin. Tapos maganda ng ilong, hindi na pango. And yung mga mata, mga labi. Kasi, um, ano na, mixed races na. May dugong Pinoy at may dugong Spanish. Traditionally, insulares enjoy various government and church position, but as economics and power shifted, they changes to capitalist driven entrepreneurs owning large parcels of lands. A notable insulare goes by the name of Luis Rodriguez Barella, also known as El, as El Conde Pilipino. He was a true European noble, but championed the rights of the Filipinos. Unfortunately, he was exiled from the Philippines after accusation, accusations of starting rebellion. Yeah, during um, Spanish colonization, um, si Luis, Luis Manuel Valentin Rodriguez 
is a Philippine proto protonationalist who flourished during the Spanish colonial era. An, an insula Spaniard and an illustrado who went to school in France, Rodriguez Barrela published a series of books advocating social changes in the Spanish Philippines, inspired by Enlightenment and the French Revolution. His most important work is El Parnaso Filipino, published in Sampaloc, Manila in 1814. He advocated the opening of local colleges to teach subjects such as mathematics, medicine, and navigation, as well as three primary schools for the poor. Rodriguez Barela also believed that foreign powers had too much influence over the local economy, and he accordingly worked to the limit changes introduced in the region by bolstering the local business association. But unfortunately, along with Jose Ortega, Rodriguez Barrela was one of the several people expelled from the island by Governor Juan Antonio Marquez on February 18, 1823, when they were accused of conspiring against the local Spanish government. Insulares was a specific term given to Criollos, full-blooded Spaniards born in the colonies, born in the Philippines or the Marianas. Insulares were part of the second highest racial class in Spanish hierarchy below the Peninsulares, or full-blooded Spaniards born in Europe. They rank above the mestizos, a person of mixed Chamorro and Spanish heritage, native Filipinos, and Indios, native Chamorros of the Mariana Island. Though Insulares were highly in the racial caste system, the fact that they were born in the Philippines or the Marianas gave the term a negative connotation during the Spanish era. The colonists were considered by Peninsulares to be a dumping ground of misfits and dregs of society and to be born in such place lower their... Um, sabi dito, sabi ng um, mga Peninsulares dati, kinoconsidered sila ng mga Peninsulares to be a dumping ground for misfits and dregs of society kahit na sila yung nasa second rank sila ng society kasi nga ay, siguro ayon sa ayon sa mga peninsulares or native Spany Spaniards talaga the fact na kahit yung insulares o curious is nasa second rank tingin pa rin sa kanila na mga peninsulares is ano um a dumping ground for misfit and tricks of society and to be born in such place lower their racial status kasi nga kahit may dugong Spaniard yung mga um, insulares tinitingnan to ng mga peninsulares na siguro um, mababa pa rin kasi may dugong Pilipino yun kasi yung tingin nila sa mga Pilipino doon na parang ano laruan lang mga mababang nila lang inalipin tayo ng mga Spaniards during their colonization. So, siguro, ayaw nilang may lahay talagang Pilipino. Siguro sa tingin ng mga Pinsula is nakakababa yun ng ano, dignidad para sa kanila. Kasi kung talaga, ano ka talaga, Spaniard, dapat um, full-blooded Spaniard ka talaga. Gusto kasi ng mga Pinsula is na ano eh, um, full-blooded like Spanish lang. Ayaw nilang malaya ng ibang lahi. Ayaw nila yung half-breed. Dapat mapakasawa mo ang Spanish din. Kasi nga, tinitingnan ng mga tinitingnan nga ng mga Spanish na kahit na yung both parents mo is um, Spanish pero pinanganak ka sa Philippines, tingin pa rin sa kanila sa'yo mababa. Kasi nga, dito sa Philippines, tingin nga sa mga Pilipino is sobrang baba. Kaya nga, inaalipin nila, alipin lang nila tayo that time. Inaabuso nila, pinapatay, nararape, o kung ano-ano pa mong gusto nila nang gawin. Kaya ang tingin nila noon, kahit ano ka, full blood Spanish ka, per, Spanish ka, pero dito ka pinakanak sa Philippines. Mababa, kahit na second rank ka nila. Dumping ground daw for misfits and tricks of society. Kung baga, pabigat kayo sa society. Parang, ayaw nila lang ganun. During the time that Latin American's economy are being dominated by the Spaniards, they are forced to 
um, sell their products in a very low prices and buy what they need in artificially high prices. And this is because of this Spain's mercantilist ideas. Mercantilism is when products from the colonies are being transported to the mother country and the mother country will sell them. In an open letter to America, Juan Pablo Vizcardo encouraged Latin American colonies to acknowledge their economic oppression and revolt against the Spanish. And it is because sa tingin ni Juan Pablo is mas alam ng mga Amerikano ang, ang nakakabuti para sa Amerika rather than the Spanish na mas na ginagawa lang ang mga bagay na sa tingin nila is may benefit para sa mother country. Spain stripped Latin America of its own potential wealth through exploitation of conquered people in the colony by claiming its natural resources and raw materials including silver and sugar for Spain. Spain's economy was dependent on the Latin America colonies. Violas sought this opportunity na uh, para mag-revolt against the Spaniards para magkaroon sila ng um, full financial control. According to Joaquin, the Philippine Creole was not Creole in the pure sense of the term. For one thing, the Philippine Creole had more native than Spanish blood. And uh, it is because dumating yung mga Spaniards dito sa Philippines nang hindi sapat yung number nila para magkaroon sila ng malaking community or makabuo sila ng malaking community. So, marami sa kanila is kailangan uh, or kailangan pagpakasal sa, mga, sa ibang Filipino or iba pang mga Creoles. And even Spaniards who did establish families could keep them Creole for at most of the three generations. Creole's purity of blood was not really an issue until 19th century when the Peninsulares started showing up. So, Peninsulares are um, the highest class of people in the economy. So, um, according also to Joaquin, in the long run, the measurement of being a Creole is not because of their races or kung, kung meron silang dugo ng Spaniard. Mas nag-focus na ang measurement ng pagiging Creoles kung sila ba ay mayaman. Um, and this is why kahit na uh, mga hindi masyadong pukhang Spaniards, katulad ni Crisostomo Ibarra, ay tinuturing na Creoles dahil sa kanyang yaman. In the work of Nick Joaquin, titled, Why Was the Rizal Hero a Creole? He focuses or he discusses the main protagonist or antagonist of Rizal's novel, which is Juan Crisostomo Ibarra, a.k.a. Simon, the merchant. Nick Joaquin's premise for his discussion centers Ibarra's lineage and his metamorphosis to Simon. Joaquin first made mention of Maria Clara and questions Rizal's choice of heroine or damsel in distress. So, kinestyon ni Nick Joaquin kung bakit si Maria Clara ang napiling heroine or damsel in distress ni Jose Rizal sa kanyang nobela. Dahil si Maria Clara ay isang um, anak sa labas ni Padre Damas Damaso na pinalaki ni, Kap ni Kapitan Chago. Maria Clara became the love interest of Ibarra. Even though hin uh, hindi talaga payag si Kapitan Chago dahil alam niya na hindi hindi rin sang ayon si Padre Damaso kay Crisostom Ibarra at Maria Clara. And when everyone was made to think that Ibarra is dead, she enters the convent. When Ibarra emerges as Simon, she tried to spring her out of the convent. But it's too late kasi uh, nag-commit na ng suicide si Maria Clara because of this uh, because of this strain on Padre Salve's lecturer's advances. The way Maria Clara was conceptualized by Rizal made his novels irrelevant in his choice of a weak-willed, helpless bastard who commits suicide because she cannot handle the pressure imposed on her. 
So that's why uh, sa tingin ni, ni Joaquin ay naging irrelevant ang novel ni Jose Rizal dahil, uh, dahil sa pinili niyang heroine si Maria Clara para sa kanya. Novela. Because heroines are being idolized for their courage and outstanding achievements as well as their noble qualities. So, Nick Joaquin thinks that Maria Clara made Jose Rizal's novel irrelevant. Maria Clara wasn't really a heroine, but rather an object of satire, which is unfortunately it was negated by the fact that Maria Clara doesn't resemble a satire. Maria Clara wasn't really presented as the irony of the story to expose and criticize people's stupidity and vices. So they think that Maria Clara wasn't also an object of satire. The thing here is, while Sarisal is fascinated by the character of Maria Clara, most of his readers were not. The iconoclast of today simply is to reject reject Maria Clara and all the obs obscure notion of her as being the symbol of mother country. Maria Clara, though, is just an in introduction to Joaquin's discussion, a segue of sorts. As was stated at the beginning of the papers, um, Joaquin's discussion centered on the main protagonist or antagonist, which is Ibarra or Simon, and the idea of the Creole as the main character of the novels. And para kay Joaquin, Chrysostom Ibarra offends the racial pride kasi hindi siya isang Indio na Filipino, but rather he is a Spanish Filipino. He belonged to the Creole class which is Spanish born in the Philippines, which uses the name Filipino in those days. So, as Joaquin would have it, the thing about the great writers is that he is always writing about his times, even when he seems to be writing about something else. With this idea in mind, Joaquin established early on his discussion that Rizal was not being prophetic and discussing the revolution of 1896. Rather, he was discussing the revolution of 1872 and looking back on the things that happened then. So, dito nga ay tinatalakay niya at binabalikan ang mga uh, naganap o nangyari noon sa revolusyon ng 1872. Bagong ikalabing na siglo, ang mga Creole ay Pilipino sa diwa na uh, ang kanilang buhay ay ganap na nakatuon sa paglilingkod sa bansa. Um, sa ikadalawang daan taon na ang mga isla ay nasa ilalim na banta ng pagsalakay mula sa mga Incheck, Hapon, British at Dutch. Sa isang diwa ay... Uh, pinawalang sala ng mga Espanya ang sarili mula sa Pilipinas dahil sa ginawa nitong mga tungkulin bilang isang inang bayan sa pamamagitan ng pagprotekta sa atin at pagsalakay. Kumpara sa Amerikano na wala pang uh, uh, 50 years after conquering us, we fell into Japanese. So everything changed. Uh, when the peninsulars began to flood the country. Nagbago nga ang lahat nung, sim nung magsimilang bumaha sa bansa ang mga peninsulars. Naging mas mura, mas mabilis ang paglalayag na dinala nila. And uh, inagaw nila ang mga Creole mula sa army, simbahan at pamala pamahalaan. Uh, at ang Creole ay na iwang nakabitin sa isang lugar sa pagitan ng peninsulars at Indios. At doon na nga nagsim nagsimula uh, um, na ipon ang sama ng uh, loob at doon na din nagsimula ang Revolusyon Creole na sinabuhay ni Rizal sa kanyang mga nobela. During the Creole Revolution, uh, four figures stood out prominently as icons of the school thoughts which circulated during that time. Sa panahon nga yun, uh, apat na figura ang namukot-tangi sa mga kaisipan ng paaralan na umiikot o umikot sa panahong iyon. Ito ay sina Pilaez, at Burgos, at Del Pilar, at Tavera. Sina Pilaez at Burgos ay mga eventualist na niniwalang uh, sapat na ang propaganda at reforma upang maaaring mapagtagumpayan sa kalaunan. Naisip din ang dalawa na, na ang mga peninsulares ay maaaring mapatalsik ng hindi nangangailangan ng karahasan. But um, sadly, eventualism died with Burgos. And uh, sina Tavera at Del Pilar naman ay 
mga filibustero. Ang dalawa ay kaanib sa Masonic Order at Subversibo. Slide number 3. According to Joaquin, the Rizal novels present the two pieces of the Creole Revolution. These uh, novels, which are Rizal's best-known work na naging essential manuals for members of the Philippine Independence Movement. Ang nolimitang hari ay ang kapanahunan Panipilaes and Burgos and Ibarra believe that education and propaganda will eventually create a climate of reform follow the fate of Burgos even to the point of being like Burgos, implicated in the uprising he knows nothing about. Sa pagsunod nga ng kapalaran ni Burgos, even sa punto ng pagiging si Burgos or even si Burgos na, na nasangkot sa pag-aalsa na wala siyang kaalam-alam. Um, his family traces, uh, Ibarra's family traces the evolution from Spaniard to Creole to Filipino. Um, his family na yun yung evolution mula sa Kastila hanggang sa Creole hanggang sa Filipino. So yun yun yung simula o nagsimula with Don Pedro na isang Espanyol na dumating nga sa San Diego at bumili ng lupa. The next happened, his wala siya or nawala siya and natagpuan ang kanyang bangkay na nakabitin sa puno ng balete sa kanyang own land. Don Pedro has a son, Don Saturnino, who comes to live sa property na binili ng kanyang ama. Sa time na yon ginawa niyang maunlad ang bayan ng San Diego and after that, tumating si Don Rafael na ama naman ni Ibarra. Sa dito, uh, pinagalitan pa nga ni Don Rafael ang, ang mga peninsulares. Although may dugong Espanyol, dito ay suot-suot niya ang kanyang katutubong kamisa. He defends a native child who was uh, katutubong bata ang binugbog ng isang peninsular which is uh, nagpupunta sa kanya sa kulungan kung saan siya na natili hanggang siya ay mamatay. Don Pedro and Don Saturnino are examples of the Creoles. Uh, silang dalawa ay, ay mga halimbawa ng Creole na nakipaglaban ng humigit kumulang dalawang daang taon. Sabi dito mula sa mga armas tungo sa araro, mula sa lansangan ng digmaan patungo sa sakahan at tindahan. Sila ay nabigong mabigyan o nabigyan ng pagkakataong maging bayani pa din sila ay uh, nailipat sa mababang gawain. Who has not been given the chance to play at being hero but have been instead relegated to lesser task? Don Pedro goes into business and then commits suicide. Even, even though Don Saturnino became a frontiersman, uh, nagumamit ng katangian tulad ng sundalo para makabuo ng sakahan sa gilid na ang kagubatan. According to Joaquin, in, the, in this instant, dito, na, dito ay nakita ni Rizal ang mga huling araw uh, ng Creole na, nakipag, na nakikipagbahagi sa isang pananako. At that time, Creole lamang ang tagapagtanggol sa mga lupain bilang imperyo. Dito din ay inihahalimbawa na ito na ang ikatlong uh, henerasyon na si Ibarra and si Don Rafael ay naging bahagi ng lupain at doon na nga uh, nawala ang bakas ng kanyang pagiging Espanyol. This is exemplified the third generation Ibarra, Don Rafael, who became a part of the land and the lost, the last vestige of his being Spanish. Slide number 5. Um, dito nga din makikita ang pagtatangka na ginawa ng mga Creole sa mga Indyo dahil daw sa pinapatay niya si Elias, ang naging revolutionaryo ngunit naging katawa-tawa dahil hindi kailanman ni Nais ni Ibarra na maging isang revolutionaryo but then he only wants to educate nga and uh, give empowerment sa masa. Unfortunately, niipon nga sa malang, sa manang loob sa kanya at sa iba pang mga Creole at doon na nga naging marahas at uh, itong si Bara ay ginawang itakwi ang kawalang kasalanan at mga pangarap to become a different person. So si Ibarra ay tumikil sa pagiging isang walang mawang na si Edmond Dantes and became a malevolent o oh, oh, masamang Monte Cristo. At the end, uh, things turned into a violent and Ibarra was made to cast off all his innocence and dreams and become an entirely different uh, person. 
and becomes a malevolent Monte Cristo. As mentioned earlier, Rizal used the character of Juan Crisostomo Ibarra as a Creole and as hero of Rizal in his novels No Limitang Here and El Filibusterismo. So, a Creole comes into being when children are born into a pidgin speaking environment and acquire the pidgin as first language. A pidgin is a language that has developed from a mixture of two languages which use as a way of communicating by people who do not speak each other's languages. For example, when children start learning a pidgin as their first language and it becomes the mother tongue of a community, it is called a Creole. Cre Criolos and Peninsulares. Peninsulares, which means full-blooded Spaniards born in Spain. Criolos, a pure Spanish descent born in Spanish America. According to Joaquin, the clash between the Criolos and Peninsulares was a repeated theme in the novels of Rizal. He also added that Rizal was chronicling the Creole Revolution in the Philippines. The Creoles were Filipino because their lives were entirely devoted to the country's service before the 19th century. He used Ibarra as his main character in his novels, and Rizal wanted to be part of the revolution, either directly or indirectly, and use art to lead the Creole revolution. Yet, an actual Creole uprising did not flare up. The Indio beat the Creole to the draw, but when the hour of reckoning came, the Creole sided with the Peninsulares. While Simon was all for the revolution, Rizal was firmly against it. So why was the novel written? Um, we all know the cliché reason as to why the novel was written. To enlighten the Philippines, to tell about or examine the social cancer. But what precisely drove Rizal to write No Limit Tanghere was that um, there are accusations daw na nagsasabi na Rizal was already developing a deep-seated um, hatred against the Spanish or the government here in the Philippines. Um, but when he was writing No Limitang Here, um, he no longer have that festering wounds na he was referring. Um, parang sinasabi na he has been cured from that wounds since then and he has no longer feeling that. Results analysis as fiction. So it seems like um, it is aligned or related to what was going on in the Cavite Mutiny, yung novel niya. And Nick Joaquin thought that perhaps this was Rizal's theory and as a way of investigating what really happened in the Cavite Mutiny. Um, many people or tayo, nakakonfuse pa rin tayo as to what really happened in Cavite. And perhaps this was Rizal's version of what sort of happened. It's like this was a conspiracy against Jose Burgos and that conspiracy was to make it appear that si Jose Burgos daw ang leader or mastermind ng revolution during that time. And as a matter of fact, we all know that the story of the Cavite mutiny really starts with the secularization controversy. During the Spanish period, there are two kinds of priests. The regular one, which is usually called the friars, and the other one is the secular priests. The friars were supposed to prepare the natives under doctrines or teaching of Catholic doctrines. Once they are already prepared, the parish will be made out of it. Then, when it becomes a parish, it will turn over to the secular priest. 
that is the tradition. However, um, instead of giving parishes to secular priests, the friars took over the parish. However, in November 9, 1774, Charles II wanted to place the Catholic Church under his control, thereby offering the transfer of all parishes to seculars. The Philippines was really pro problematic at that time because um, at that time, um, konti lang daw yung mga secular priests. And by early 1800s, the War of Independence in the Americas caused by Napoleon's War made secularization a big problem for the Philippines. From Pelaez to Burgos. Um, these were the times where many men were re actually receiving crash courses to the point na marami sa kanila were really being trained to become priests resulting to incompetent priests. However, hindi naman talaga yun yung pinaka-issue that time. Um, there were three events made that made secularization a battleground. Number one is the rising identity consciousness of the Creole, which started in Varela's time. Number two is the War of Independence in the Americas, which dislodged the many peninsulares out of former colonies. It meant that um, maraming peninsulares ay pupunta sa ibang colonies in order to serve. Number three is the influx of peninsulares to the Philippines, including more experienced friars. Um, the influx of the peninsulares caused a problem, especially under secularizations, where um, yung mga friars are really trying hard to um, for them to not be taken out to the parishes. Uh, see. However, Father Pedro Pilaes, an acquaintance of Luis Rodriguez Varela, led the Filipino change and insisted the church's canon laws that a parish should be given to a secular priest, not to the regular priest. However, magiging successful sana yun because that's really the law of the church. Pero nung namatay siya during an earthquake in 1863, um, lahat ng plano na yun ay nice na baliwala. And after him, it was Father Jose Burgos that took over the leadership of the, of the entire movement. Jose Burgos, 1837 to 1872, took the lead when Pelaez died. Peninsulares thought he was not a threat and that he remained faithful to the old Creole tradition. Burgos continued the tradition of Baler, Balera and Felaes, transforming Creole image to such a radical state that he was confused of separate ideas. Tim, Peninsulares wanted to retain power Insulares, then calling themselves Filipino, were becoming radicals. Carlos Ma de la Torre, June 23, 1869 to April 4, 1871. Rafael Esguero, April 4, 1871, January 8, 1873. This slide said that Jose Burgos took the lead when Felice died. So Burgos continued the community when Felice died. But Burgos said he was followed the tradition of Bal Padre Valera and Felice. He did not do any other tradition but he Follow the Balera and Felice tradition of commune in mutiny. Sa madaling sabi, um, ginawa niya lang 
yung ginawa nila Balera at Pilaes na pag-aalsa o yung old tradition mutiny na sinasabi. Ang ibig sabihin pala ng Creole is dalawang lingwahe na nabuo sa isang lipunan. And dito naman sa kay Carlos Ma de la Torre, isa siyang Spanish na soldier at na lingkod sa government of the Philippines. Tapos si Rafael Esguero yung sumunod dahil sa pumanaw at si Carl Rosma de la Torre. So si Rafael Esguero ay namuno din sa Pilipinas. Lang po. Second slide. Cavite Munity and Gamburza. The January 20, 1872, Munity in Fort San Felipe in Cavite was mysterious affair which cause can be attributed to the imposition of tax including the fa failure to the workers of the Spanish arsenal. Because of what go was going on in Spain, which communities and anarchists and each other throats. There were rumors that the arsenal was infiltrated by the international. This together with the strong suspicious about Creole separatism made the peninsularis paranoid. Through crude investigation, four conspirators were identified as the mastermind of the mutiny. Mariano Gomez Jose Burgos, Asito Zamora, and Francisco Sualdoa, the last being that state witnesses. Dito sa Port San Felipe in Cavite, parang may nagkaka buo na yung, parang lumalabas na yung nabubuo na pangkat, tapos biglang may lumabas ata na imposition of tax o pag pagpataw ng ng tax sa mga workers of the Spanish arsenal at dito na nga nangyari yung mga haka-haka at parang inano ng international yung mga arsenal na Espanyol parang inimbestigahan na sila tapos na na paranoid yung mga peninsulare sa mga pesto nila dahil sa nag-iimbestiga nga yung international. Tapos sa matinding pagsusuri o investigasyon na tukoy nila yung apat na mastermind ng mutiny. Sila na nga sila Mariano Gomez, Father Jose Burgos, Juanito Zamora, and Francisco Salauda. As Joaquin would see it, Rizal seems to annul what he was been saying so fascinately during the novel, True Simon, what has sounded like a savage sneering at reform because a celebration of reforms and of a spiritual self renewal salvation cannot come from corruption, garbage only produced to add tools. For for Joaquin, result will have the Filipino people suffer and toil. Joaquin sees the no limit tangere is mocking the reformists for being naive in making the reader see the collaboration will get the nation nowhere. By rights, then, El Peliburitirismo should have been about a revolution that succeed. But this is not the case. Sadly, the Creole Revolution had failed. It is interesting that Joaquin has used Alexander Dumas' Count of Monte Cristo as the basis of comparison which the two Rizal model. It is interesting because Dumas was Rizal's favorite writer. The comparative analysis between 
Edmond Dantes en Crisóstomo Ibarra en Camp Monte Cristo en Sa Simón is quite an insight. Parang ang ibig sabihin ni Joaquin dito ay yung dalawang sinulat ni Rizal na libro ay masasabi niyang bias siguro yung sinasabi pinapahiwatag dito ni Joaquin kasi sinulat lang nila yung ni Rizal dito yung kahirapan at kung anong nangyayari sa bansa. So para sa magiging reader, magiging, magiging bias sila. So magkakaroon ng mga sama ng loob yung tao sa mga sumakop sa Pilipinas dahil dito. So magkakaroon ito ng revolution na pwedeng mag-succeed o hindi. And dito sa last paragraph, parang kinumpara dito yung mga writers ng sa panahon noon kung alin yung mas may pinakaganda pinakamaganda pero mas favorite ni ay hindi pa parang yung ginamit ni Joaquin kinumpara niya si Alexander Dumas of Count Monte Cristo as basis kay Rizal but But interesting because Dumas was Rizal's favorite writer. Yun yung nakakatawa dito. Yung kinukumpara ni Joaquin kay Alexander Dumas si Rizal pero si Dumas favorite na writer si Rizal. These are some points in the discussion of Nick Joaquin wherein we would like to degrees. For Joaquin, the revolution of Simon failed because it was doomed to failure from the beginning. How can something which has created from hatred succeed? As we would like to see it from this perspective, Simon attempted to use the teaching of Machiavelli wherein the prince must either completely destroy or not destroy at all. Simon Plan had marriage, but what they lacked was will have to carry through. Those were part of the revolution, were not fully ruthless, and this, these were their downfall at very last moment. They decided they had hearts they, and could not truly destroy those who would stand in their way, hence in their moment of weakness, they were taken off guard, failed. Simon True have succeed, succeeded if he had not been distracted by the death of Maria Clara. Unfortunately, he was. It could be said that the novel might have talked of the fast, failed rebellion, but they could also be prophetic warnings if you do have the courage to destroy your humanity and become ruthless and become ruthless in your annihilation of those who stand against you if you cannot love if you cannot truly hate and kill to create love and life you are most obviously doomed to failure Maybe ang gusto dito ipahiwatig po is pagpapasok ka po ng mga siguro tigmaan dapat wala kang awa para ma ma mapasaksid mo yung yung labanan kasi si Simon po dito is pagharap nila sa digmaan um root Ah, wala silang may awa pa po sila tapos ganoon na nga may awa hindi pa nila kayang tuluyang patayin yung nasa harapan nila na parang bibigyan pa nila ng chance na um, bubuhayin nila o ganoon kaya siguro sabi dito sa last part If you cannot truly hate and kill to create love 
and life, you are most obviously doomed to failure. Babagsak ka lang rin lang at babagsak. Kung may, hindi mo kaya bumatay para mag-create ka po ng love. Yun lang siguro. Number one. Do you think that is a good idea to kill Maria Clara in the No Limit Angere that caused Simon destruction and plan to fail? For me, it is not good because si Maria Clara ang nagrepresent sa Pilipinas sa panahon ng Kastila. Siya is yung nag-serve as the image of the native people in Spanish era. So, para sa akin, parang ganun na po sir is parang malabo po siya kasi siya nga yung nagrepresent tapos namatay siya dun sa story na yun so maybe it the cause of maybe cause siya ng pagka destruction so kasi napatay destruction so a plan yung plan nila siguro failed because Simon has not prepared also in the war sir kasi distract, distracted at may hindi pa nila parang hindi sila masyadong ruthless sabi dun sa now ng ay. if you will be taken away that part how would you continue the storyline would you let Simon's plan to succeed and prevent Maria Clara from dying or would you stick the same storyline as what Rizal presented um, for me siguro stick na lang kay Rizal kasi siya mismo yung gumawa nun eh na story na yun kaya yun siguro yung gusto niya para sa akin pangit naman namatay si Maria Clara at hindi na na tupad yung plano ni Simon pero si Rizal yung pinaka-main author. Kasi yun siguro yung pananaw niya na ganun yung mangyari sa story niya. Maganda naman ang kinalabasan. So, stick na lang siguro ako. Opinion ko naman po yun eh. Opinion lang po. Number three. Do you think that it is irrelevant that Maria Clara represent the symbolism of the Philippines and Rizal Nobel. Ah, um, hindi siya irrelevant kasi siya yung dun nga sa ginawa ni Rizal, siya yung nagrepresent kung ano yung isang babae na native sa panahon ng Spanish era. So yun yung nag-symbolize kasi siya yung pinakauna-unang na kita ni Rizal na pwedeng maging model o kaya mag-represent ng bansa. Kasi doon siguro ni Rizal sa kanya nakita yung ano yung karakteristik ng pagiging isang dalagang Pilipina at marami pa iba na nakita si Rizal sa kanya na Katangi-tangi na siya lang po yung nagtataglay. Thank you po.